Nothing we would change at all A feeling that is deeper than the ocean Raging to the sound of us The whisper of the wind <coughs> Calling us to something more What if we set out upon the waters Sail till we lose sight Rush of the unknown. I'm not gonna be able to fuck with you or I'm gonna be in shambles. Davis, you've been my best friend, soulmate, and lover all in one over the last three years. Marrying you is my absolute dream fairy tale coming true. I cannot wait for a lifetime of love and happiness by your side. Life with you is so much more fun and has springs has brought me so much joy. I love you more each and every day, and I am so excited that the day is here that I get to become your wife. I love you so much. <laughs> Jamie, you're my best friend and my favorite travel partner. Every day I wake up, I manage to fall more and more in love with you. I cannot imagine this life without you. You're the most thoughtful, caring, loving, adventurous, and beautiful woman that I know. Makes me the luckiest guy that I know. I promise to stand beside you through the challenges we will face, no matter how big or small they are. I promise to love you with all my heart and challenge myself every day to be the man that you deserve. We are a team and there's no one else I would want on my side. I want you to know that I love you, Jamie, and I will until our last journey together. continual legacy of love. Our coming together proclaims that love is powerful and transforming, that human companionship and loyalty are precious values. Each of you have been connected to Jamie and Davis. You are all bound together with invisible threads of connectivity, worth cherishing 
This is why gathering as a community is such an important part of a wedding ceremony. Their love for one another and for each of us and for the broader community shows that love makes a difference in the world. We also celebrate a journey. The way love guides us on an adventure. This couple goes on many adventures together. <laughs> and just watching them on social media makes me tired, <laughs> but inspired. Now, many of you have already signed the postcards. And those postcards are meant to send wishes while traveling. We know that whatever comes, these two have a resilience in their relationship that will take them anywhere, literally anywhere. <laughs> and we are all here to witness their ultimate journey beginning this evening, their marriage. We pray that this couple will be blessed by God today and always. With our love and our prayers, we support Davis and Jamie now freely as they give themselves to each other. Let us pray. Gracious God, always faithful in your love for us, we rejoice in your presence. You create love. You unite us in one human family. You offer your word and lead us in light. You open your loving arms and embrace us with your strength. We thank you for the union of the hearts of Jamie and Davis on this special day, their wedding day. Heaven sings in triumph, for a new love shall unveil the glory of your name. May the presence of Christ fill our hearts with new joy and make new the lives of this couple whose marriage we celebrate. Bless all creation. Through this sign, shown the love of Davis and Jamie for each other. May the power of your Holy Spirit sustain them and all of us in love that knows no end. Amen. Amen. I had to smile when I received the scripture reading that Jamie and Davis wanted to read this evening. It is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. And I smile because this letter that Paul writes is a letter anticipating a journey. And I am not surprised that this couple chose to read this this evening. They are about to embark on the most important journey of their lives. Anticipating all the joy and sometimes hardships that come in a long and loving marriage, these words from Paul, chapter 12, verses 9 to 18, demonstrate the character of this couple and inspire us in hope. Paul sends these words ahead of him saying, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be hopeful and joyful, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Another reading this evening is from Robert Fulgham, an accomplished painter, sculptor, musician, and a theologian in the Unitarian tradition. Jamie and Davis have chosen this poem from beginning to end to share with you this evening and the poem goes, you have known each other from the first glance of acquaintance to this point of commitment. At some point, you decided to marry. 
from that moment of yes to this moment of yes, indeed, you have been making promises and agreements in an informal way. All these conversations that were held, riding in a car and over a meal and during long walks, all those sentences that began with, when we're married, and continued with, I will, and you will, and we will, those late night talks that included someday, and somehow, and maybe, and all those promises that are unspoken matters of the heart. All these common things and more are a real process of a wedding. The symbolic vows that you are about to make are a way of saying to one another, you know all these things that we've promised and hoped and dreamed? Well, I meant it all, every word. Look at one another and remember this moment in time. Before this moment, you have been many things to one another. Acquaintance, friend, companion, lover, dancing partner, and even teacher. For you have learned much from one another in these last few years. Now, you shall say a few words that take you across a threshold of life, and things will never quite be the same between you. For after these vows, you shall say to the world, this is my husband, and this is my wife. Indeed, didn't they choose the perfect poem? <laughs> <laughs> and you are right now on the threshold, ready to embark. Now is the time. Davis, do you take Jamie to be your wife? To love her faithfully as long as you both shall live? I do. Jamie, do you take Davis to be your husband? To love him faithfully as long as you both shall live? I do. Then speak your covenant promises that you have come to offer before God and everyone here. Jamie, please repeat after me and speak to Davis. Davis, you are my best friend. Davis, you are my best friend. And one true love. And one true love. Today I give myself to be your wife. Today I give myself to be your wife. I promise that I will be. I promise that I will be. By your side in everything you do by your side in everything you do. I vow to cherish you. I vow to cherish you. Support you. Support you. Smile and laugh with you. Smile and laugh with you. <laughs> and love you. And love you. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. Until the end of time. Until the end of time. Davis, please repeat after me. Jamie, you are my best friend. Jamie, you are my best friend. And one true love. And one true love. Today I give myself Today I give myself to be, your to be your husband. I promise that I will be by your side. I promise that I'll be by your side. In everything you do. In everything that you do. I vow to cherish you. I vow to cherish you. And support you. And support you. Smile and laugh with you. Smile and laugh with you. And love you. And love you. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. Until the end of time. Until the end of time. The wedding ring is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two loyal hearts in endless love. Love freely given has no beginning and no end. Your rings say that even in your uniqueness you have chosen to be bound together. Now, Davis's ring has features in the ring that shows a whiskey barrel <laughs> and antlers, <laughs> and those things remind him and all of us, of course, of the hobbies of hunting and being outdoors and conservative and, and nature and conservative. Mm -hmm. And as many of you know, I knew Jamie during her undergraduate years. She even tutored my youngest child during pandemic virtual schooling, an angel in disguise. <laughs> And in all that time, Jamie just shines with integrity and joy. It's not surprising how different their rings look. <laughs> sure, hers is a classic emerald cut 
a sparkling setting in white gold with a double band that holds everything together. And indeed, Jamie upholds herself in grace and glowing ease. They're unique, yet encircling their lives for years to come as symbols of their marriage. So let us pray. Bless these rings by the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, to make them worthy expressions of the union which they represent. By these symbols of covenant promise, gracious God, remind Jamie and Davis of their uniqueness, to always remember who they are in this marriage, to remind them of your uncircling love and unending faithfulness, that in all their life together, they may know joy and peace in one another. Amen. Amen. Jamie, repeat after me, Jamie. Jamie. This ring is my promise to you. This ring is my promise to you. Davis, this ring is my promise to you. Jamie and Davis have chosen a special unity symbol this evening, an antique train case. Invented as a type of trunk to store everything from grooming products to small household items and mementos, these cases were using during train travels in the early to mid-1900s. Trains were the most preferred mode of transport in those times. Now why am I telling you this? We are in the midst of a train station, and this starting location for their marriage, this couple embarks together on their journey today. And each of them have chosen a special object from this starting location. And they hold mementos to, and to join in their legacy of those who have come before them. Now in this antique train case, they place those mementos because they have many more travel adventures ahead of them. And we can imagine them carrying this case along the journey from this day forward to even open it again on their 50th wedding anniversary together. We are all aboard for this couple, I couldn't help it, <laughs> as they place their items in this case and they go on this long journey together. committed yourselves to each other in this joyous and sacred covenant. Become one. Fulfill your promises. Love, serve God, and one another. May God bless you as you embark on this journey. As you leave this place, may you grow in holy love, find delight in each other always, and remain faithful forever. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies 
and gentlemen, family and friends, I now present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Davis and Jamie Powell. Welcome everyone tonight, because I know this was not a 15 minute trip from anywhere, but it, there is somebody here that's close, right? Yes. Yeah. There, but there. Yeah, okay. When Jamie said, and Davis, I have a son-in-law now, I gotta <laughs> say him too. She wanted a destination wedding. We said, is it in Virginia? And she said, well, Kind of, but <laughs> not really. When she walked in this place, I knew it was a done deal for us. This town is pretty neat, and the people have been really great to us, and we appreciate that. Some thank yous. My wife, who worked on this with Jamie, from the very start. A great wedding party and mistress of ceremonies. And everyone who made this night what Jamie and Davis had hoped for. And Dr. Lowe, we appreciate you officiating because Jamie's always thought a lot of you and you're a special part of her life. Now for a few stories. <laughs> I, I won't tell those. <laughs> I'm going to use my notes because I'm not as good as I once was. 
And B, when my girls are concerned, my emotions tend to get away with me sometimes. First, I want to give you a rundown of how we got here tonight. Not Davis and Jamie's story. Y'all already know that but how we actually got here tonight. It began about a year and a half ago. I was sitting on the beach with Davis, and we were drinking a beer. <laughs> and uh, Joy and Jamie, they had gone out to do a little shopping to see if there was anything Jamie needed. <laughs> I was sitting in my chair, and I, I could tell Davis was a little, he's acting a little funny. I mean, we were there by ourselves, and nobody really bothered us. And I couldn't figure out why he was so jumpy. <laughs> then he said, uh, I have something I'd like to talk to you about. And I said, well, I, I knew then that he was going to ask me to, to marry Jamie. And, uh, of course, I gave him my blessing, and Joy's blessing. And he, he did great with it. And I know we're both men of few words, so <laughs> we just did a handshake, and we were done. At that time, I knew a little about weddings, but unfortunately, that has really changed this last year. <laughs> I know more than any man should ever know. <laughs> Plus, I had the, the problem of, was I supposed to share this, uh, share this with joy? But we've been married 39 years, and I knew that I needed to share that with joy. Because I didn't want to be on the wrong end of that. <laughs> well, the first thing Joy did was, all right, she wanted to know every detail. And of course, I told her, I said, I know nothing. But she said, oh my God, does he have a ring? When will he do it? Where will he do it? I said, Joy, I don't know. Well, a month went by then almost two. And I said, damn, I better make sure I told him I said yes. <laughs> but before I could, he, t he texted me. And he said he had a ring. And he said, you know, I'd like to do it in the mountains when we go. I said, that'll be fine, but you're on my vacation again. <laughs> so that's where it happened. Uh, on a little Pigeon River, on a little bridge in Gatlinburg, one of their favorite places. When I saw the look on their face, I knew I'd given the right answer and took a second to ask God to always help them keep that feeling. And that was last November, and we had reservations to go for your birthday dinner. <laughs> which was now an engagement dinner. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Later that night, Davis said too, that he's, he's glad that part was over. <laughs> that we can sit back, relax, enjoy the holidays, and maybe like March, start planning a wedding. And I said, Davis. <laughs> I mean, the next day, I had a car full of Christmas trees, all kinds of wedding things. But anyway, I said, Davis, do you even know my daughter? <laughs> all right, for Jamie, where, where to even start? She said, I got it. You got it. Okay. You got it. All right, you stole my heart and our heart from the very start. So when I got married young and I had you late, and you became my entire world. 
We never stop being amazed by what you can accomplish. Personality? Yeah, well, that's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't even read it now. Thank you. I'll be all right. Because <laughs> it, it's Lane's turn next. <laughs> You know what, sometimes we call, we say, you're a lot. She does everything with passion and determination. All-state athlete, recruited to a college team, and whoever knew, under all that ball bouncing, there was a scholar who would be halfway to a PhD and working full time. But it's none of that, that identifies as Jaylor. It's her larger than life way she has. From the day she was born, your mother always told you to live your best life. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Some of y'all are laughing because you know. <laughs> and for sure, she listened. She makes a celebration out of everything, as you can see here today, and she expects the same from the rest of us. <laughs> she, <laughs> she loves big, and it's nothing she wouldn't do for Davis, her family, or friends. From birth, she never met a stranger, and when she's in the room, you know it. <laughs> now she has found the person who completes her, Davis is a lot more low-key <laughs> than Jamie, but it's probably not a, that's not a bad thing for sure. He loves to hunt, she loves to shop. <laughs> they both love to travel and experience new things. But most of all, they love each other and the dreams seem to align. As Dr. Lowe said, marriage itself is a journey and I think they get that. Davis is smart a hard worker, sensible, and most of all, is good to Jamie. As a dad, that's all I'm looking for. I've heard people say, and then there were two, and today, we're the parents of not, uh, we're not the parents of an only child, but then there are two. We love you both and look forward to watching you live your best lives. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's my last speech ever. Okay, that was good. I have been procrastinating writing this speech for over a year now. Not because I didn't have things to say, but because I knew Jamie would kill me if I said them. <laughs> so I wrote this on the way down here, and here goes nothing. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Lane, Jamie's maid of honor, and the unbiological unbi sister. I have known Jamie for eight years. She came into my life in the summer of 2015 as my and my brother's babysitter. She began as a sitter, but quickly became more than just that. Our summers were spent making countless trips in and out of the pool, many cooking fails, and Disney Channel shows. Now keep in mind, when Jamie first started coming over, she couldn't even open a can of SpaghettiOs. She still can't. <laughs> oh, and apparently still can't. <laughs> but in no time, I had her making tacos and pancakes, even though she still can't flip them. <laughs> One of our many adventures was me teaching her how to pump gas because Jeff had already done that for her. <laughs> Another core memory was her fantastic idea to make a homemade slip and slide. <laughs> we used a huge tarp and plenty of soap to make it perfect. We had the best time until we realized that the tarp killed my dad's perfectly manicured grass. Now we can look back and laugh. <laughs> Jamie was not only a babysitter and a sister, she was also a referee between my brother and me. After a couple of remotes thrown to the head, she learned her fair share of first aid. She has always been there 
with me through all of my special events. Dress shopping for my first middle school dance, my first homecoming, and even being beside me when I almost crashed the golf cart into the house because I in fact forgot which pedal was the brake. <laughs> Not to mention we put over 10,000 miles on that poor golf cart. <laughs> Before I start, stop talking about our adventures, I have to add that every morning Jamie was coming over to babysit us, I would wake up bright and early and sit in the window waiting for her arrival, just so I could bully her into getting in the pool at 8 a.m. <laughs> if you know me, you would know that I have cheered for seven years and would be shocked to know that Jamie had to bully me into trying out the first year. Thank goodness she did because it has 100% been my life all of those seven years. That was the first of many times Jamie has been a huge influence on my young life. Through breakups, plenty of basketball games, and what seems like dozens of graduations. <laughs> we both have had each other's back. So for me to be able to be a part of this day is just another milestone we get to experience together. Jamie and I have been planning this day for years and years, but not until a few years ago did we know who the groom was going to be. <laughs> the first time Jamie ever said anything to me about Davis was through Snapchat. She sent a picture of him and the words, Davis Powell 21. Yep, that's it, just his name and age. <laughs> Little did I know that Davis Powell 21 was going to be the one. <laughs> I have never been friendly towards any of Jamie's past tragedies, and it took some warming up to Davis, but I quickly learned that you can't help but love him. He has got to be the most patient and accommodating man I have ever met. <laughs> there are not many guys that would be willing to wear matching bathing suits in public, but bless Davis's heart, he has in fact worn these bathing suits with Jamie multiple times. Y'all know we can't wait to see the matching ones for the honeymoon. I know that there is nothing that either of them wouldn't do for me if I needed them. I hope that y'all's marriage is full of plenty of travels and your love is as unstoppable as the wedding group chat notifications. <laughs> this speech hasn't been but so serious because we all know that I would cry and not be able to read it. But since it's almost over, I think it's about time for me to cry. But before that happens, here's a little advice to Davis that was given to my dad over 23 years ago. To keep your marriage brimming with love and a loving cup, whenever you're wrong, admit it. Whenever you're right, shut up. <laughs> so raise your glasses and toast to the sister and new brother-in-law that I love most. Cheers. Cheers. Man, it's gonna be a little different than all that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. What's going on, everybody? Um, I'm Nick, Davis's cousin, for those of you that don't know me. That y'all's lost. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. But we can meet right there at that bar after all this is over, have a couple drinks. Um, first things first, Jamie, you look absolutely stunning this evening. I know you're used to wearing the pants in this relationship, so it's nice to see you able to throw on a dress every now and then. Davis, I know you did your best, but you know, yeah, you look good. But on a serious note, uh, me and Davis have been best friends since the day we were born. Lived right down the street from each other our whole lives and never took the first day for granted. I could go on and on about all the sports and hunt memories we have made over the years, but we'd be here all night. You really are the little brother I've always wanted. Not super little, but you know, <laughs> that, that big ass belly. <laughs> I know everybody's waiting on a specific story memory that I've had with Davis, but I don't want neither one of us going to jail tonight, and I definitely don't want Jamie pawning off her diamond before the night's through. <laughs> I do remember the first night Jamie decided to come see this guy in Wakefield. We were upstairs in Michael Miranda's garage in the bar, drinking. Absolutely drunk. She was dressed up for a Broadway show and me and Davis had just came out of the woods and looked extremely drunk, probably like halfway homeless. 
I knew instantly he stood no chance of getting a second date with this girl, but clearly I was super wrong about that because here we are. Uh, now here almost three, almost four years later, watching these two get married. Congratulations to both y'all, and thank y'all so much for including me and everybody else here in y'all's special day. Davis, I love you so much, man. I'm so proud of you. And Jamie, I love you too, and thank you for loving him the way that you do. And welcome to the family. That was good, man. You've got it going on, brother. Hi, everyone. My name is Tori, and I have the absolute pleasure and honor of standing beside Jamie today as her matron of honor. I want to thank all of the family and friends for being here today to celebrate the bride and groom. Jamie and I met at Mary Baldwin University, and we instantly connected. One of my favorite things about Jamie is her fun-loving personality. She is always ready to take off for a weekend getaway, <laughs> together filled with laughing, eating, and what we do best, shopping. <laughs> Jamie is beautiful, hardworking, she's brilliant, she's thoughtful, and so incredibly kind. Jamie, all of these things make you an amazing friend, an incredible sales specialist, an awesome daughter, and now my favorite of your titles, a wife. The truth is everyone in this room is better for knowing you. You love so deeply, deeply, selfishly, and unconditionally, and I know Davis is the best partner for Jamie because I've seen him mirror these traits for her. No matter what may come your way, your combined patience, resilience, and love will make you an unstoppable team. Jamie and Davis, we have shared so many memories together, and today is another great day to add to our collection of sweet memories. Today you become husband and wife, and after a quick pit stop in paradise, you will return to what is ordinary life. But my hope for the both of you is to not be fooled by what some consider ordinary, and instead I hope you will, will always know how extraordinary it is to fall in love with the same person every day for the rest of your life. Everyone, please raise your glass as we toast the start of the pal's greatest adventure yet. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> One more time for Jory. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
Yo, give it up for Dad one more time. All right, we're gonna welcome the bride and the groom to the dance floor for their first dance. This has been in one.
Spinning in the